Good morning. Welcome now to our math class. We are now in quarter three, week three. Okay, to start with, let's bow our head and put the presents to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to begin this new school day. We ask that you bless the learners and the teachers that make our school a great place. We pray that you will guide us in all ways, so that we will seek your will in everything that we do. We ask this in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Okay, so this week class, our lesson is all about visualizing, naming, subscri uh, describing, and drawing polygons with five or more sides. Then we have describing and comparing properties of polygons the regular and the irregular polygons and the third one we are going to visualize congruent polygons okay so look around your surroundings what do you see all right so figures and shapes all around is it wonderful okay so all things that your eyes can see was made from different figures, shapes, in all forms and sizes. Now, there is one simple form of math I tell you. So be, uh, this morning, I will help you uh, to understand more about polygons. So after going through our lessons, you are expected to visualize, name, describe, and draw polygons with five or more sides and describe and compare properties of polygons, the regular and the irregular polygons. And you are also visualized congruent polygons. And also, you're going to find enjoyment in drawing five or more sides polygons. Before we go uh, on to our topic, we're going to check first your first, uh, your answer for the last quiz. Okay, let's have number one. Find the percentage, write your answer in a sheet of pad paper. So number one, the answer is 42. So 35% of 120 is 42. Then number two, we have 50% of 60 is 30. Okay, for number three, we have 25% of 55 is 13 and 75 hundredths. And for number four, 40% of 90 is 36. And for the number 5, we have 20% of 90 is 18. Now, for the letter B, answer the problem below using the four steps. Write your answer on the inner sheet of pad paper. So, the four steps, it start with step 1 is understand. So, under the understand, we're going to know what is us and what is us in the problem there are 125 total animals in an animal park consisting of lions tigers and zebras 60 percent of animals are lions and zebras what percent are tigers so the problem asks about the percentage of the tiger then after uh, under the understand you're going to know also what is us or what are the given facts so the, uh, the given facts in this problem is 125 and we have 60%. <clears throat> then second step, we're going to plan. So under the plan, you are going to solve, uh, know the strategy. So the strategy that you are going to use is solve or you're going to find the percentage. So after you know the uh, strategy, you're going to know the formula that applicable to do your uh problem solving so the formula is what is the formula in finding the percentage we have p equals r times b okay so then after you plan you are going to solve so using the formula p equals r times b so our given is 125 and 60 percent so we have 125 times 60 percent so we're in 60 percent we are going to change first two decimal numbers before we multiply. So therefore, 
60% equals 60 hundredths times 125 equals 75. So 75 lions and zebras. But the uh, question is, what is the percentage of the tiger? So all we have to do is, we're going to subtract 75 from 125. So therefore, we have 125 minus 75 equals 50. So the answer is 50 tigers. Now after we solve, the fourth step is check. How do we check? Okay, we are going to add the answer. So we have 75 lions and zebras and we have also 50 tigers. So we have 75 plus 50 equals 125, the total animals in the animal park. So therefore, our answer is correct. Okay, let's go now to our lesson this morning. Okay, polygons are closed plane form by a line segment that meet at a common point. This line segment is also known as a side meet at a common point which is called the vertex so look at this picture so this is a star and i have also here a star using my jo board so this star is a six pointed star this one is five pointed star so what is the difference the number of the sides and the number of the vertex also okay now <clears throat> How many sides are there in star? There are star has 10 sides. What type of polygon is this? Or what type of polygon is the star? Okay, so we are going to know that after we go through our lesson. How about the second picture? <clears throat> it's a picture of umbrella. How many sides are there in the umbrella? There are eight sides. <clears throat> Let's count the number of sides. So from the start, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. How about the umbrella? We have, I'll start from the color green. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are eight sides in an umbrella I, in in a star we have 10 sides now um, umbrella class is an ex is the most example common polygons that we use in our daily lives why because we use umbrella when <coughs> too much heat and also when the rain comes <coughs> now let's go to our uh, lesson now. So look at this figure. We call this octagon. So the shape of our uh, umbrella has eight sides. So therefore, we call that octagon. Since octagon has eight sides. So look at this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So therefore, we call this octagon. So again, umbrella is an example of the common polygon which is octagon because it has an eight sides now a polygon class has a point and also a line and what are the lines in this figure okay so in writing a line or a line segment you are going to use a symbol like line yung buhit the, uh, the capital we use the capital letters and then you have to put a line above the letters so here in our illustration or in our figure we can have line ABC line BC line CD line DE line EF line FG line GH and also line HA so these are these are the example of lines so we have this line AB line BC line CD and of go and and so forth now Aside from line, we can also uh, get the angles. Where can we find the angles? So the angles, that is the common, uh, we have the common endpoints, we call the vertex, and inside the vertex, it forms an angle. 
and that also uh, the angels also use a capital letter as their name or sometimes it is used in number so let's have this we have a so inside this vertex we have the angle a angle b angle c angle d angle e f c uh, g and e so we have also eight angles in this octagon so we have eight la uh, line segments or the sides we have also eight angles so these are the eight angles angle a angle b angle c angle d angle e angle f angle g and angle h and using those capital letters class we can also name the polygons since the polygons is named according to the letters that being used so what are the letters so if it is on an octagon so you have to you have to use all the letters the uh, eight letters in order to have a close plane figure so we have let's start with ang uh, polygon a b c d e f g h so we can you uh, name this polygon a b c d e f g h we can also name this polygon as polygon b c d e f g h a so out of this polygon class we can name eight or we can uh, name uh, it has eight names it possible names are eight because it has eight sides and it has eight vertices so the eight vertices we use thus to name the polygon so therefore we are we have also uh, polygon c d e f g h a we can also have polygon d e f g h a b c then we can also have polygon e f g h a b c d then we have polygon f g h a b c d e and then we have polygon g h a b c d e f and we have polygon h a b c d e f g so we can name eight also because an octagon has eight sides and eight vertices eight uh, angles also now for more uh, not about polygons we are going to discuss the types of polygons and you know class types of uh, there are three types of polygons so let's have this one is convex and concave polygons so what is the difference between the concave the convex and the concave polygons so look at this illustration so we had an example the rhombus and we have the example of that uh, figure it has how many sides let, let, us, let us count we have one two three four five so therefore we can name this pentagon because it has a five sides now between the two illustration or between the two um, figure where is or what is the uh, convex and what is the concave all right so the concave is the rhombus other uh, convex rather the convex is the rhombus and the pentagon is an example of concave polygon so now what is the difference between the two all right so that when we say convex polygon it is a polygon that has at least one angle that has greater than 180 degrees so look at the rhombus the one's angle is uh, greater than 180 degrees how about the con uh, the concave again the convex has every entire angle less than 180 degrees how about the con the concave so the concave is uh, has at least one 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 uh, 
less than 180 degree Celsius. So that is the difference between the convex and the concave polygons. So that is one type of polygon. The other type of polygon is we have simple and complex polygon. So look at this illustration. We have the octagon and the star. So between the two, what is the simple polygon? What is the complex polygon? So, alright. So the octagon is an example of a simple polygon. And the star. A star is an example of complex polygon. When we seek simple polygon, it has only one boundary and does not intersect the area of polygon. So look at the sides. There is no line inside the polygon. So therefore, there is no, there is no intersection be between the boundary of our polygon. While in a complex polygon, in this look at the star, it, ha it has a line seg uh, segment passing through the center or passing passing through the center and there is an intersection or the polygon intersects itself. So there is an intersection and out of that uh, star, you can have different polygons like pentagon and the triangle when you are going to cut the star. Are you follow? Alright, so again, the simple polygon is a polygon has only one boundary and does not intersect the area of the polygon. While the complex polygon class, polygon intersects itself. There is an intersection boundary inside the polygon. And the third one, we have regular and irregular polygon. So what is the difference between the a regular and irregular polygon. <coughs> so, let's have this uh, figure. I have here hexagon and also trapezoid. Trapezoid has four-sided uh, four polygon while hexagon has six sides. Okay. So, between the two uh, uh, figure, what e, uh, where is irregular polygon and where is an irregular polygon. Alright. So, hexagon class is an example of regular polygon. And the trapezoid is an example of an irregular polygon. When we see regular polygons, the polygon has all equal sides and angles. So, look at the sides of hexagon. Their sizes are equal. Their Angles are also equal. Therefore, we call that regular polygons because all the sides of an and the angles of hexagon are uh, equal. While when we say irregular polygon has an unequal side or angle. Walang pare, hindi magkaparehas ang lahat ng angle o ang lahat ng side. So look at the example, our trapezoid. So the trapezoid has only two equal sides. The both sides, uh, the, horizon, the horizontal line. While the vertical, the two vertical line or the two vertical line segments are not equal. And observe also the angle inside the vertices. So here we can see this an acute angle, an acute angle, and the angles at the top we can say that they they are obtuse angle because the uh, the size was barren. So magkaiba yung size nila. So therefore, this is a uh, trapezoid is an example of an irregular polygon. So that is. Uh, the difference between the regular polygon and an irregular polygon. So again, we have three types of polygons. The first one, we have the irregular and regular polygons, simple and complex polygon, and convex and concave polygons. So those are the three types of polygons. A polygon class can be classified also according to 
So let us discuss first the uh, properties of regular polygons and an irregular polygon. So again, the regular polygons is equal and congruent. What are the what are equal and congruent? Their sides and their <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> their angles. While an irregular polygons, we can say this is unequal. When we say unequal, magkaiba. They are not the same. Different. Ayan. Magkaiba. Different in size. Different in angles. Now, let's, in regular and irregular polygon, we can also have different line segments. We have, okay, look at this. That is an example of hexagon. A hexagon, or we call this a hive section. Okay, a hive section has six sides. Therefore, it can be classified as hexagon. <coughs> okay, let's enumerate all the sides of the behind. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> section. So, let's have... We have A, B, C, D, E, F. Line A, B, C equals 6 millimeters. So, therefore, line B, C is also 6 millimeters. Line C, D is also 6 millimeters. Line D, E equals also 6 millimeters. And we have line E, F, 6 millimeters. And line e, A, F, 6 millimeters. <coughs> So, all the sides of this uh, beehive are equal. So, therefore, this is an, uh, a regular polygon. And also their angles. So, look at the angles. We have here 120 uh, degree. So, we have angle A, we have 120 degrees. Angle B, 120 degrees. And we have angle C, 120 degrees. And we have angle C, angle D is 120 degrees also. Angle E is also 120 degrees. And angle F is also 120 degrees. So therefore, this kind of hexagon is an example of regular polygon. So what that is the difference between the regular and an irregular polygon. So when we say regular, all the sides of the angles... Uh, all of all the sides of the polygon and all the angles are equal. Okay. So to get the total or the sum of the angle inside the polygon, we are going to use the formula S equals quantity of N minus 2 times 180 degrees. Alright. What is S? S is the number of sides. Uh, uh, total the number uh, n represent as the number of sides so when we are going to solve the hexagon we have 6 minus 2 equals 4 then times 180 degrees so therefore the total degrees of this uh, regular hexagon is 720 degrees now as what I have said a while ago we can classify polygons according to the number of its sides. In other words, we can name the polygons according to the number of its sides. Okay, let's have, if the sides of uh, polygons is three sides, the polygon is triangle maybe. Triangle. From the word, the pre, uh, prefix Tri, that means three. So therefore, we call that triangle because it has three sides. So triangle is an example of polygon. And that is the smallest uh, angles formed in our polygons. Then, we have four sides. What polygons is a four, uh, has four sides? We call that quadrilateral. Mamaya, sasagihin mo uh, square, circ, uh, rectangle, parallelogram. Those are example of quadrilaterals. Why? Because there are four sides. 
And the quadrilateral class have different types. We have square, we have the rhombus, we have the trapezoid, we have the trapezium, parallelogram, and we have square, uh, rectangle. Square is a special type of quadrilateral because, yes, their sides are equal and their angles also are equal. And it belongs to a regular polygons. Kasali siya sa regular polygons. Also, the rhombus is an example of regular polygons. Next, okay, quadrilaterals, the pre prefix quad means four. Okay, next, five-sided polygon, we call that pentagon. From the word penta, the prefix penta, which means five. When we, pag sinabi pala natin penta, lima ang ibig sabihin noon. How about polygon with six sides? <clears throat> We call that hexagon. From the word hexa means six. Then it's have heptagon, the seven side polygon. It's, we call that heptagon. From the word hepta, which means seven. <coughs> then eight sided polygon, we call that octagon. So an octagon has eight sides, eight angles, and eight vertices. And it came from the prefix octa, which means eight. <clears throat> okay. How about nine-sided polygon? Okay, we call that nonagon. From the prefix nona, which means nine. Yeah, nonagon has nine sides. How about ten-sided polygon? All right, we call that decagon. From the prefix Deca, which means 10. So, therefore, decagon has 8 sides. How about 11 sides? Alright, we call that andecagon. So, from the word andeca, we call, means 11 or 11 sides. And the andecagon has 11 sides. And we have an example of 12 sides. And we call that dodecagon. From the word dodeca, which means 12 sides. Those are an example of, some example rather, of classification of polygons according to the number of its sides. Through the number of its side, we can name the polygons. Or we can identify the polygons. It's either way it is a regular polygon or an irregular polygons. Now, let's move on now to the congruent polygons and the similar polygons. Polygons. So, what does the difference between the congruent polygons and similar polygons? Alright. When we say congruent polygons, uh, the, po the, two com uh, the comparison of two alike polygons with corresponding sides and corresponding angles. When we say alike, parehas Parehas silang octagon, parehas silang nonagon, parehas silang triangle. Corresponding sides. What do you mean by corresponding sides? The, there is a side of the two octagon that equal or congruent ang size nila. Did you get? Let's, let's say for example, we have two isosceles triangle. Since that Isosceles triangle has two sides are equal and the other one is not an equal side. So, the two corresponding la sides are congruent. So, therefore, we call that congruent polygons. And then, the third side is also congruent to the third side of the other isosceles triangle. Okay. So, congruent polygons are two polygons that have corresponding sides and corresponding angles. While when we say similar polygons are two polygons with the same shape but different in sizes. Ayan. Parehas sila na triangle but the sizes of the sides, the sizes of an angle are different. Magka iba. So take a look this figure. A hexagon. Two hexagon. What have you observed to the two hexagon? 
for this one. I have here also in my JU board. Okay, what have you observed? Alright, they are the same. How about the size of the sides? The size of an angle? They are equal. So, therefore, these two, uh, these two, rather, these two hexagon are congruent polygons. Why? Okay. Let us examine the lines segment of these two uh, hexagon. Let's start with the line. Alright. Here in figure 1, we have line AB. In a figure 2, line GH. This one. And this one. They are corresponding. And we call that they are congruent. So we use this symbol as congruent. It means the symbol tells us congruent to or equal to. Yan po ang sabi ng sign to. Now, another one. Let's have this line BC is congruent to line HI. Have you seen? Alright. Now, line CD, this one, is congruent also to this line IJ. Can you follow? Okay. Let's have another one. Line DE, this one, is congruent to line JK. Yan. Magkaparehas sila. And then, let's have this line EF, line EF, is congruent to line KL. And then the last one, let's have line AF is congruent to line GL. Again, these two hexagon are congruent because the number of its sides or the sizes of its sides are equal or corresponding to one another. Okay. Go. How about the angles? We are going to examine the angles. Let's learn more about their angles. The given angles class is 120 degrees. The angle A, 120 degrees. The angle B, 120 degrees. The angle C, 120 degrees. So on and so forth. In figure 2, we have also Angle G is also 120 degrees. Angle H, 120 degrees. So therefore, their angles are corresponding or congruent to one another. That is why this two hexagon is an example of congruent polygons. How about similar polygons na tinatawag natin? Anong kaibahan ng similar polygon kaysa congruent polygon. So, I, I am going to use this one. Okay, look at this. I have here similar hexagon. But look at the sizes of its sides. These sides is greater than compared to these sides. Have you seen? Alright. Or in other words, this side, let's say uh, this is AB. Line AB is greater than line DE. That is meant by similar polygons. Comparison of two alike polygons with different incises or angles. Ayan. Hindi magkaparehas ang sizes ng kanilang angles at ng kanilang size. So again, as what I have mentioned a while ago, the formula in finding the total or the sum of an angle of polygon is S equals quantity of N minus 2 times 180 degrees. Okay. Can you follow? Did you get our lesson? Alright, so let's have these unexercises. Okay. Find the measurement of the congruent polygon based on the figure below and fill in the blanks. 
So let's uh, look at the figure. Write the answer only. I will give you one minute to answer that. So look at this. We have angle A, this one, and the angle B, this one. Then we have line AC measures 6 centimeter in the perimeter of the triangle is when we see the uh, perimeter, cl uh, perimeter class is the total distance around the polygon the total distance around the polygon so in other words you are going to get the sum of the sides of a polygon kung ano man yan kung octagon man yan kung dodecagon man yan you have to sum up the sides in order to get the perimeter Alright, I know you are done. So, let us answer now for number one. If line BC measures 6 cm, then line EF measures... Okay, very good. The answer is 6 cm also. Why? Because they are congruent. They have similar or they have equal sides. Okay, number two. If angle A is equals 60 degrees, then angle B measures also, very good, 60 degrees. Because, again, they are congruent. Therefore, their angles are equal. Now, if line AC measures 6 cm, this one, line AC, then the perimeter of the triangle is... Since it is congruent polygons, their sides are equal. So therefore, the perimeter is 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 18 centimeters. Very good. Now, how about number 4? Since line AC congruent to line DF, if line DF is 6 centimeter, then line AC is what? Okay, it's also 6 centimeter. Very good. And the last for number 5, we have since angle B is congruent to line angle E, given that angle A is 60 degrees, then angle D is also very good. 60 degrees. Okay, let's have another exercises. Okay, this, one, this time you are going to name the polygons according to the number of each. Sides. So, you are going to count the sides in order to give the classification of the polygon. So, let's have this number one. I'm going to count also for you to answer uh, quickly. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, number one, seven sides. Number two, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So, twelve sided polygons. Number three, two, four, five. Five-sided polygons. And then number, number four, we have two, four, six. Six-sided polygons. And the number five is four-sided polygons. Okay, are you done? Wrong spelling, wrong. Okay, I'll give you another 30 seconds. Alright, so we're, we are going to check now. So number one, seven-sided polygons is, okay, we call that heptagon. The answer for number one is heptagon. Then number two, we have 12-sided polygon, that is dodecagon. Alright, 12-sided is dodecagon. How about number three? We have five-sided polygons. Okay, that is pentagon. How about number four, six-sided polygon, that is hexagon. And the number five, four-sided polygons, 
Okay, that is quadrilateral. Hindi trapezoid, hindi uh, rectangle. Ha? Baka mamaya may nagsagot ng rectangle or trapezoid. Ang tanong is polygon. Classification of polygons. Not type of quadrilaterals. Okay, so let's have another activity. Okay, directions. Match column A with column B. So let's have this the column A. And we have the column B, your choices. So the column A for number 1, I have all equal sides and angles. Number 2, I have at least one angle greater than 180 degrees. Number 3, I have only one boundary and does not intersect the area of the polygon. And number 4, let's have, I have every interior angle less than 180 degrees. And then for number 5, I have an an equal side or angle. So your choices are A complex, B concave, C convex, D irregular, E regular, and F simple. So you're going to write the letters only. Okay, 3 seconds more. Alright. Okay, shall we check now? So, I have an equal sides and equal angles. What polygon is that? What type of polygon that is? Alright, that is a regular polygons because their sides and angles are equal. So, what is, what is the best example? Equiangular or equilateral triangle. And also square. They are uh, regular because their sides, their angles are equal. How about number two? We have, I have at least one angle greater than 180 degrees. That is an example of, very good, that is concave polygon. Concave polygon have at least one angle greater than 180 degrees degrees. How about I have only one boundary and does not intersect the area of the polygon? The answer is okay, that is simple polygon. Has only one boundary and does not intersect the area of the polygon. How about number four? I have every interior angle less than 180 degrees. Very good. That is convex polygon. And then for the number 5, I have an, an equal side or angle. The answer is irregular polygon. So, an irregular polygon has no sides or no angles are equal. Well, what? Classification of triangle is an example of an irregular polygon. Okay, very good. Escaline polygons. Because escaline polygons, their sides are different from each other. Iba-iba ang sizes. Okay. What have you learned this morning, class? Okay, so you have learned about the polygon. So again, what is a polygon? A polygon is a closed figure made up of three or more line segments. Why line segments? Dahil straight line lahat. Walang curved line. Pag may curved line, it is not an example of polygon. And take note, the polygon start with the three sides and that is triangle. And polygon class name according to the number of its sides. Mabibigyan natin siya ng pangalan kung bibilangin natin ang number ng kanyang sides. Dahil marami tayong example of polygons na tinatawag natin na irregular polygons. Pag sinabi kasi natin irregular polygons, their sides are different in sizes. And also their angles. Iba-iba ang size. May mahaba, may maiksi, may malaki, may maliit. Okay. And again, polygons have three types. What are those? 
we have regular polygons and irregular polygons. Then we have the convex polygon and the concave polygon. And the third one is simple polygon and complex polygon. And polygon can be classified according to the number of its sides. And we have also learned about the congruent polygons, the comparison of two alike polygons with one corresponding sides and corresponding angles. Okay? I think you have already learned about the polygons and you have already um, digest all the lessons that I have inculcated in your mind. So, before we go on to our next activity, you're going to stand up and let's have a short exercise para magalaw-galaw yung ating mga kamay na hindi lang sulat ng sulat. Then, after we have our exercise, you have to prepare your one whole sheet of pad paper in order to answer your application and your assessment which you are going to uh, pass it to our Google Classroom. Are you ready to our exercise? Okay. So let's have our uh, short exercise. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiast. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake, awake, alert, alive. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake, awake, alert, alive. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. Alright, so that is our short exercise. Now, for your application, again, you get your one whole sheet of pad paper and write only the answers. Do not copy the instruction and the sentences provided for you. Again, sagot na lamang. At kung kasya lahat sa isang papel, yung ating application at ang ating assessment, dyan na lang sa isang papel isulat. Alright, so let's have this application number one. Supply the missing words. Choose your answer in the box. Okay, so ito yung pagpipilian natin. Congruent polygons, congruent to, similar polygons, symbol congruent, two polygons. Alright, number one, are you ready? Okay, number one, the comparison of two alike polygons with corresponding sides and angles are blank. Okay, choose your answer from this inside the box. Alright, number two. To illustrate congruency, it is represent, represented by the blank, which means number three, blank. Anong nagre-represent or anong symbol for congruency? At ano ang ibig sabihin mo? Alright, for number four, congruent polygons are blank that have corresponding sides and corresponding angles with one another. While, for number five, Blank are two polygons with the same shapes but different in sizes. Okay, I think you're done already. Let's go now to our number two application. Okay, look at the picture again. What uh, what kind of or what classification of polygon is it? Alright, this is an example again of an octagon because it has eight sides. Okay, observe the regular polygon below. If line CR measures 12 cm, what are the measure of the other sides? Write your answers in your notebook or in a piece of pad paper. Sabi ko kanina, doon na lang lahat idudugtong-dugtong. Okay, so again, the given is... Line CR equals 12 centimeters. So, ilang centimeter lin ito si number 1, number... Oh, this is number 1. Ito mali yung number. Number 1, line RE. Number 2, line EA. Number 3, line AT. Number 4, line VE. And number 5, line CE. So, ilang centimeter yan? Bawat line. Alright. 
Let's go now to our application. Our assessment na tayo. So, kung pwede pa din kumasya sa isang pad, dyan pa rin ilalagay. Okay. It's very easy. You're going to name the following polygon according to the number of its side. So, you're going to count the number of the side and then give the name of that polygon. So, number one, pizza. Number two, the house. Number three, what you call that? And number four, yung bagwa. Then the number five, yung parol natin. Okay, let's go now to the second assessment. Okay, choose your answer in the box. So the, your answers are uh, an irregular polygon, Polygon, decagon, concave, simple, regular, convex, complex, congruent. So these are the questions. So number one, a closed plane figure formed by line segments that meet at a common point is a blank. Number two, a polygon that intersects itself is blank. Number three, a polygon with an unequal side or equal an uh, unequal angle is blank. Then number four, we have a polygon with every interior angles less than 180 degrees is blank. And for the number five, a polygon with ten sides is blank. Okay, let's go now to your assignment. For your assignment class, on a sheet of pad paper, draw at least five polygons that you can see inside your home. And then, color them. Dalagyan nyo siya ng kulay. If you have questions, you can ask me in our messenger or in our Google Classroom. So, that's all for today. Thank you. Enjoy doing your activities. God bless us all.